Hi, I'm Jared Fry, General Manager of Medina TV, and I want to welcome you to this year's edition of Candidates Forum. Hi, I'm Jacqueline Rinksmeyer, Executive Director of the Greater Medina Chamber of Commerce, and we are once again pleased to partner with Medina TV to bring you this voter education series. The views expressed by the candidates in these forums are not those of Medina TV or the Greater Medina Chamber of Commerce. All candidates and contested races were invited to participate. These interviews are meant to be informational without endorsement from Medina TV or the Greater Medina Chamber of Commerce. Please enjoy this year's Candidates Forum. Joining us now in studio is Aaron Harrison. Uh, he was appointed to the Medina City School Board of Education when Brian Hilberg had uh, stepped away. You stepped in and uh, got the appointment and are now uh, looking to run to uh, fill that spot uh, once again here this November. So welcome, Aaron. Glad you could join us here today. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Um, first, uh, for those of the viewers at home that may not know you, just take a few moments and tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure. Uh, again, my name is Aaron Harrison. I'm an attorney. I've been uh, practicing in Medina for uh, a little over 15 years. I've been here since 2005. Um, and uh, I've got uh, two children who are both Medina City School students, uh, Lincoln, who's in fourth grade at Blake, and our daughter Lucy is a second grader at Blake. And they're both um, you know, really proud Medina students. My wife, Kelly, is a teacher not in the district. She's a teacher up in Brunswick, but she's a Medina alum as well. Mm -hmm. So um, having been here for a little over 15 years, I've really kind of grown to love the community, even though it's, I guess, my adopted hometown. Um, and uh, saw the opportunity to get involved with the school board and, and thought uh, it was a chance for me to contribute some of my um, experience that I've learned and knowledge of the community and put it to use for our students and, uh, and our uh, school district. Yeah, I think you probably just touched on what I was going to ask next here. But uh, yeah, what, what, for starters, one made you run for the open seat when it was left vacant, and then two, to step up and, and decide to run again. Sure, well actually it happened in the reverse order of that, which you know is, is uh, maybe relevant, maybe it's not, but uh, uh, I had been planning to run because again, with the ages of my, of my kids, um, and I actually was raised in a, uh, in a home with a kindergarten teacher for most of her career, and then she became a guidance counselor later in her career, and her father was a school superintendent in rural Northwest Ohio, kind of in the area where I was, was raised. So I've always had a special interest in school issues. Uh, I know that there's always a need for good, high caliber individuals to serve on the school board, mm -hmm. and uh, I thought that I could make a difference and, and, and join the group. So I intended to run, in November, I'd actually just started the process of getting my signatures to get on the ballot, and then the opening happened, and I thought, well, if I'm gonna be involved anyway, it may, may be a good thing to get a head start and to get involved in some of the issues that pop up between now and the election, mm -hmm. so. So getting that, that taste, I guess, by getting appointed, um, did it change your goals of what you would like to, like your own personal goals of why you wanna join school board, uh, goals you'd like to accomplish if elected? Did starting a little earlier change those or do you still have the same goals? Yeah, I'd say, you know, my actual goals are to, to really, in a lot of ways, continue the great things that have been done here at the schools. I think we've got a great administration. We definitely have a very dedicated uh, staff, faculty, teachers, and, and everyone else involved in the district and really talented individuals throughout our every level of our administration. I'd already been involved with the school, the Medina City School Foundation, so that gave me a little bit of comfort with the what I was stepping into. I didn't have any experience on the actual issues of the board, but it did help me feel that I had a little bit of a comfort level of what I was walking into. Uh, in terms of actually being on the board, I don't think it's changed my approach at all or my, my opinion on things. Uh, it, it is a good introduction to have, I think. Um, maybe you could call it a trial by fire. I don't know if that's the right word for it or not, but um, it's good to have a little bit of, feel like you've got a little bit of um, footing under you mm -hmm. to hit the ground running if you're elected in, you know, in come January, mm -hmm. so. And you say you get, they kind of get put to the fire, and, and one of those has been a, a big topic issue here. Of course, with the pandemic, uh, you, you have the, the mask, the mandates, the security measures for the students. Um, I guess, how do you look upon that issue, and how do you look upon it moving forward? Yeah, it's a great question. You know, I was just, before I came over here, I was just looking at some of our, our school numbers. Um, you know, the mask issue has been one of the great issues of the pandemic. The one, the biggest one, I think, relating to schools 
is in, in building or out of building or hybrid approach or anything like that. I think we've definitely nailed it on that. We want our kids in the buildings full time. Uh, we're doing that this year. We're doing it successfully. We're doing it safely. So I think that's to be commended. The mask issue is kind of the lingering issue around that and no less passion around it than in any of the other issues that have related to the, to the pandemic. And um, you know, the, the people that I talk to and hear from in the community obviously have varied and different views on the issue. Um, I think the one thing that we need to be able to do is balance the issues and the, and the, the um, occurrences in our individual buildings with the desire that most parents have and the position most parents are in to make the best decision for their particular mm -hmm. child. And I think the uh, hybrid approach in terms of a mandate that we have now strikes the right balance. Um, because it, 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 what it does is it allows the administration to step in if numbers start to get out of whack in a particular building, they can require the, the masks for everybody. Um, if the numbers are low enough, then it, be, it goes back into uh, the hands of the parents to make the decision, and, and I feel like they're better served making that decision than we are as an administration, again, barring any numbers that are, that are, that are growing or increasing. And, um, you know, really, there is no right answer on that. It's going to be uh, hotly debated until we put a lot of this stuff behind us. Um, I, I think it's, it's one of those things, you, you hear the opinions that everybody have, you hear the concerns that everybody have, and you have to just make the best decision that you can make moving forward. Yeah. And that's where I come down on making the decisions that make the most sense for keeping our kids in school. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're, we're at a point where we've got the ability to kind of put the, flip the switch to a, a mandated mask situation if they get close to those numbers. Um, and, to, and to toggle it off when it's not. Because there are a lot of other concerns that people have related to the masking. It's not just about um, exercising their civil liberties. I think parents have experienced this with their kids where they go through various emotional and social challenges related to the pandemic response. And mm -hmm. so giving the parents the, the, the keys to make that decision when circumstances allow, I think is very important. Mm -hmm. Now, as you look at this, and I'll expand, we'll kind of go beyond the pandemic issue, just issues in great. general <laughs> as, as, as a school board uh, that you'll face. Um, and we'll talk about some of those in some further questions. But how do you see the relationship with um, the school board members yourselves as far as coming to a consensus on items or, or issues and also that relationship with the superintendent? Uh, I guess we can even throw the treasurer in there, too, since you also look at the, the hiring there. Um, how do you feel that relationship should work uh, between both entities? That's a great question. So, you know, it, it's been, you know, you started with me being appointed to the board. It's been an interesting time to, to, to jump on with some of these hot button issues because I do think generally um, as an organization, as an entity, we want to be able to speak with one voice. And um, I do think we've got great leadership at the top with, with Mr. Sable and, and Mr. Chambers on the side of the uh, treasurer. And, and they do uh, a very good job, and, and they, uh, on some of these, you know, well, on most of these operational issues, statutorily and otherwise, it's their responsibility to, to run with them. Mm -hmm. On big picture issues, they're gonna put things in front of the board, but the board isn't really a, um, we're not an a executive body. You know, we're, we're more kind of sitting in an advisory capacity. A lot of people don't appreciate that distinction. So when they come to us on an issue, I think it's because they want to get the pulse of the community. Mm -hmm. And uh, so whether it's masks or anything else, I think the one thing that's important for the community to know is that uh, the decisions that I make are going to be informed by those conversations that I have with community members. Mm -hmm. I think more often than not, this is recent instances notwithstanding, more often than not, we're going to have a collective um, body, we're going to be working well together at a personal level. I have a lot of respect for the other folks on the board, mm -hmm. and um, it goes beyond just casting votes at those meetings. It's about working together outside of the meetings, between meetings, and just having mutual respect. Mm -hmm. I think that's there. Um, but uh, short of you know the 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 uh, things that people don't see, I think it's important that when we're at meetings that we're we're representing kind of the diversity of views that mm -hmm. exist in our community. And in spite of 
kind of the heated issues and some of the rhetoric that we've experienced at our recent meetings. I think we're doing that. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe the meetings and the sound bites that come out of the meetings don't lend themselves to all the nuance that's behind mm -hmm. our individual positions on these votes. But um, I do think we're doing that. I think we're, we're poised well to move forward and continue to do that in the future, even after this issue is behind us. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like the board always has to be unanimous in its decisions, or you think it's okay uh, once in a while if, it, if, if it's split? I've always said that all debate is healthy. Um, I won't say that I've softened on that <laughs> recently, but uh, we've seen some debate in our meetings, unfortunately, that hasn't been that healthy. Uh -huh. um, but at least within the board, within the confines of, of the five people who are up there and the administration, the conversations we have, we have what I would say is a healthy level of debate. Uh -huh. And um, I don't expect, I don't have, my, my opinions aren't cast in stone. Uh -huh. uh, I expect to be challenged on things that people think that I'm not coming to the right conclusion on, but if we look at the same you know, information or the same scenario, we come to a different conclusion, all I'm gonna expect from somebody in return is they, they have enough respect for my conclusions being different from theirs as I have for theirs being different from mine. Mm -hmm. So um, I think in that sense, uh, it's, it's, it's healthy and uh, it's good. I don't, I don't think we need to vote unanimously mm -hmm. on every issue. I think when it comes time to put a levy on the ballot or something like that, I think those become a lot more uh, critical issues to have uh, unanimity and uh, you know just have everybody on the same page because we want to make sure we're all going to be pulling and putting all of our best efforts behind those mm -hmm. those kinds of ac activities. Sure. So now uh, moving to the resident side of things, because of course you might have a, a way you look at an issue from a personal side. How do you balance that with what your constituents' opinion may be, whether they agree or disagree with you? Yeah, that, I think that's the trick of any elected office. Is uh, you know you're always <laughs> you're always uh, at the at the um, kind of the mercy of the electorate who put you there, and uh, I think that's good for all of us to remember that. Um, it's a little bit different for me, having not been elected before. I've I've you know if I if I am out of touch with that, there, I would normally say, well, in four years, there's a chance for the, uh, the voters to, to vote me out. Well, actually, in about a little over a month, there's an opportunity <laughs> for the voters to vote me out. So I think that's the type of accountability that we have and will always have. Um, I also think the school does a great job of leaving the lines of communication open. You know, we've mentioned this at our recent meetings. You're able to reach out to your board members directly. Our phone numbers and emails are all published online. And um, you can reach out to us at any time. It doesn't just have to be in the in the public comment section mm -hmm. of an in-person meeting. And I think this is a great community. I know this is a great community, but one of the indicators of that is how eager everybody is to share with you their opinions, whether they agree with you or not. They share with you their opinions, and I think that helps us make the best, most informed decisions, informed by the people who are ultimately going to put us in these spots. Mm -hmm. So now, if, if uh, re-elected to the position, uh, one of the big issues, of course, has always been school funding. Uh, how the state funds it, you know, you're going to run down the laundry list of how it changes and, right. and ways to look at that. How do you feel the district is in terms of funding, uh, possible bond issues or, or levies that the school might have to look at? Well, I think those things were is another unfortunate fallout from the, uh, from the pandemic because mm -hmm. we're probably a year and a half or maybe even two years behind where we should be on those issues because everything, kind of the whole world stopped turning when, when the pandemic got started. I, I think, again, another reason that the administration can be commended is they've done a great job of, of managing those things prior to the pandemic. I think we're on track or actually a little bit, uh, you know, after the deadline that we had set for creating a, uh, a new levy or bond issue. And uh, they've made the, the funds that are there go as far as possible. I know that's on the horizon, and that was one of the, the reasons I wanted to get on the board was so I could be part of those discussions. Mm -hmm. um, Again, we've got a great community that is always going to, we've, we've seen them support our, our levies, in the, at least in the recent past, mm -hmm. and I think there's a lot of trust that, um, that everybody's operating, kind of pulling in the, in the same direction. The challenge I think we have is to, to turn the focus back and, and probably to do so relatively quickly to the academic and extracurricular and all the other great things that are happening in our schools mm -hmm. and away from a lot of the day-to-day, -day, you know, hot topic wedge issues around masks or no mask or the quarantine rules or mm -hmm. things like that. And I think 
it's going to be a challenge for whoever's on here next to do that and kind of reunite around the community. But I do have every confidence that our community is going to get there and they're going to they're going to get their eye on the on the horizon to what is really out there in the future to be um, our, our, our priority, mm -hmm. which is which is having the best school district that we, we can and, and, and making it a great place for our students and our uh, faculty and everybody else. Yeah. Now, another one of those issues, like you said, that uh, the course of events of today have kind of put it on the back burner, but another one of those is looking at uh, redistricting. Uh, for the district. Um, what are your thoughts in terms of uh, redistricting? Yeah, I was among the parents who was very interested in hearing what was going to, to come about in the spring of 2020 um, with the plans for that. And I know those are always difficult decisions, but I think if everybody kind of leans in and, and does their part and, and sees where the long-term benefits are, kind of have to take a step back from your own personal interest and where it fits into there, um, I think whatever plans come out are going to be in the best long-term interest of our of our district and, it, and its long-term health. Yeah. Um, you know, we've seen some changes demographically since the last time we had that conversation, some fairly significant changes mm -hmm. in our community, and I think it's very important that we're responsive to those things. I think if we wait much longer on that redistricting conversation, again, as difficult as it's going to be to, to have, if we, if we wait much longer, we may be at the point where we've got certain uh, communities and individuals in our community that are that are really suffering as a result of it. So we want to make sure we keep ahead of the curve on that, being proactive as opposed to reactive. And I think, I expect that's how those conversations are going to go. Okay. Now we're speaking with Aaron Harrison, uh, one of the candidates up for three of the, there are six candidates running for three seats uh, for the Medina City School Board of Education. And Aaron, I know it's been great that you've been answering all the questions for me, uh, but I want to give you the opportunity, uh, if there's anything I missed or something you wanted to touch on with the voters yourself, uh, to turn the mic over now for you to say whatever you'd like to to the voters. Sure. Well, I think you did such a great job with the questions. I, there's not much else to say, but um, no, I, I appreciate the opportunity to be here. I appreciate the trust, at least, that the existing school board has put in me to, to appoint me to this position. I hope that the voters uh, realize that, you know, no matter what anybody's opinion is on one issue or uh, a particular issue that may be the hottest issue of the day to day, I think what we really want on the school board is uh, good, hardworking individuals that are dedicated to the community that are also aware of some of these issues and the, the bigger picture strategic planning issues that go down the line. Because I think. Ideally, the school board would be operating in kind of that lane as opposed to putting out fires as they come. I know right now with the pandemic, we don't have that luxury, but uh, we're going to be making up, I think, for some lost time on that, that time that was taken away from us by circumstances out outside of our control. And uh, I hope that everybody, when they go into uh, to cast their ballot or, or mail it in or however they, they go about voting, just keeps that in mind that the skill set of a, of a good board member relates back to experience and uh, commitment and, and dedication really to our community. So I expect to bring that to the job and I hope the voters uh, have confidence in me that I will. All right, thank you. Once again, it's Aaron Harrison, the current school board member, uh, looking to be one reelected uh, come this November. And now, Aaron, I want to thank you for uh, stepping up and taking part of the political process. Uh, it's always a big leap for people to do, uh, for a lot of times, a thankless position sometimes. <laughs> uh, and so it's great to see you serving and, and looking to do that. So I wanted to say thank you for that, and I wish you the best of luck this November. Thanks, Jared. Appreciate the time. Mm -hmm.